NASA. We'll be there in four days, but it'll take them another nine months. Running from west to east, we have the New River up top, the Lansan River here, and through the bottom we have the Jinshan River. And uh, we're driving from Mangkhan to Baisu, and we've come to a beautiful spot uh, here, which has actually inspired, uh, inspired me to stop and point this place out. And that's a beautiful river here that runs into the New River. The Lansan, Jinsha, and New Rivers run in parallel through this region from north to south for 170 kilometers, whilst miraculously never converging. This area is renowned for its diversity of flora and fauna. 34 endangered species of plant life here are under state protection. A quarter of the whole country's animal species can be found in this region, including 77 that are under state protection as well. This is also a place of cultural mix, as 16 ethnic minorities reside here. <笑>你们好 so I've uh, arrived in Chiento where we were told uh, it, it's uh, renowned for its beautiful girls. Um, however, I've spoken with some of the locals and they said they, uh, they haven't heard of any beautiful girls here and that it probably was back in the day there were beautiful girls. So I've, uh, I've gone for a walk around myself and all I could really find was a couple of children and uh, just one little girl. So um, maybe they knew I was coming and uh, they all decided to stay indoors tonight. Presumably, since this is the first stop after the long and treacherous journey across the Bangda grasslands, it's no surprise that the men of the caravan would have found the female company so beautiful. We're here at the fabled 99 twists and turns, and uh, unfortunately for us, it's not actually a Tibetan dance move. It's actually what you see behind us, which are twisting and turning roads that descend very, very, very quickly. We're gonna be going from 4,200 meters down to 2,600 meters within 10 kilometers. So, uh, very excited about catching some altitude sickness. Among the 99 twists and turns, there are 49 major U-turns. I actually started out trying to count them, but as darkness fell, it became harder and harder. I soon realized I was wasting my time. And anyway, I had more pressing matters to concentrate on. Due to the state of the road, we were well behind schedule. This meant we would be taking on the 99 twists and turns with the sun about to set. Everyone in the convoy was desperate to finish the descent before nightfall. So we're about to, uh, halfway down the uh, 99 twists and turns and uh, haven't suffered any sickness yet, so I'm quite happy. But we have uh, been in the car for about 10 hours uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's been something where now I'm trying to imagine actually being a Magwoto along the Chamagudao and I'm amazed, I'm amazed, because even in the safety of this 4x4 car, I actually feel quite scared. Um, it's extremely steep, I mean, we're, we're going down, you know, extremely steep gradient, and, uh, and I can't imagine that if it was raining or snowing, how these people would actually deal with this, uh, with this entire place, I mean, amazing. It took us three hours to complete this part of the trip, the last 30 minutes were by far the most hair-raising as we descended in absolute darkness with steep cliffs on one side, ready to welcome us if we came off the track. Sure. Not uh, asleep yet. <laughs> this is too... How could we be asleep? We're driving in the pitch black through one meter wide roads <laughs> in steep 45 degree angle hills. No one can sleep in these conditions. <laughs> as long as he doesn't sleep, I'm happy. 
We drove for another two hours in this state of permanent fear before we finally arrived at our destination, Basu. Basu means place at the foot of the mountain for brave people. It's no wonder, after negotiating those treacherous turns, that those at the bottom should be renowned for their bravery. Fifth day. <laughs> you ever find yourself traveling in a convoy? Make sure you're equipped with a high frequency walkie talkie. This little device saved our skins on more than one occasion. Billy, what are you excited about today? You're looking forward to the walk around the lake? At the same time, people in the group used the walkie-talkies for a different purpose. They made jokes, chatted with each other, which also added something to the adventure. This made us all feel even more part of a team. We don't use air conditioning in the cars, and due to the dust, the windows are firmly shut. With the temperatures higher than normal, we're traveling in a sauna on wheels, fully clothed. And then an interesting situation takes our minds off the heat. Finally, we're there, Ramwu Lake. Now, it's time for our second major activity. After the debauchery of the wine tasting, some good old fashioned walking is just the tonic we need. Since the group is made up of people from all walks of life, with ages ranging from 20 all the way up to 60, the organizers are very careful to advise us all on how to exercise at this altitude. <laughs> So uh, we're beginning our uh, five kilometre walk around uh, Ramwu Lake and uh, we're here at almost 4,000 metres and uh, I've been told that this part of Tibet is known as the Switzerland uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Asia and that uh, here we're going to be seeing the uh, Lake Geneva of the Orient. Another fact that you should know is that apparently at this altitude if you, feel, uh, if you uh, walk uh, with nothing on, it's the equivalent of walking with 20 kilograms on your back. So uh, I've decided to bring a bit of extra and uh, use these. Let's see how it goes. I don't think I need to use these yet.
we set off around the famous and vast Ranmu Lake, which sits at 3,800 meters above sea level. It's surrounded by glaciers and snow-capped mountains, and thawing snow forms the body of the lake. Intriguingly, the water is supposed to change color in different seasons, from aquamarine to turquoise. I'm not a huge fan of hiking, but the enthusiasm of the group is infectious. A much deserved rest. For once, I'm not the only one goofing around, as everyone is having a great time taking photos and enjoying another of Mother Nature's gifts. My shoes and my socks and my feet at the same time. <laughs> and who said chivalry was dead? Tired. The Palong Zambu Gorge is world famous and one of the deepest canyons on earth. It's also one of China's three major areas of virgin forest. It's made up of numerous rocky slopes, some of them as steep as anything I've ever seen before. It's a fine place to enjoy some rock throwing into the Palongzambu River below, especially when you think that the average depth is almost double that of the Grand Canyon in Colorado. This impressive site is a perfect place to end the day and our episode. Lhasa, the final destination of our wonderful adventure. But first, we have to make it through Death Valley. Come and join us for the climax of this three-part series as we continue our adventures on the Tea and Horse Trail.